Microwaves are very interesting because Dr. Frey has studied that for many years, and the Russians know about this, yeah. and Putin knows about this. And what happens is microwaves damage the temporal lobe of the brain and inf influence not only hearing, not only balance, wow. but also behavior and very brain serious. damage. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very, very serious. serious stuff. Uh, could be either way. It could be either way at this point, but definitely something yeah. like either sound waves or radio waves. All right, let's Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to suggest that we stop saying with confidence that the United States um, government is, you know, testing microwave weapons on people or attacking its own citizens. And that isn't because I believe it's not happening. Um, you know, we don't really have the smoking gun proof that they're doing it, but we do certainly have proof that they knew. And I think that's good enough. Uh, BioFX came out in 98. They, they very clearly stated uh, that they could use microwave auditory effect to communicate with an individual or hostage takers um, using the microwave auditory effect or microwave hearing, that they could um, psychologically devastate someone using a satellite, using existing radar units, which of course are on satellites, um, that they understood that they could uh, organize behavior motivation, attention, memory, aggressive, sexual, adjustive activities. They knew all that. They declassified this in 2006, which means that Congress knew it by then. So that's a much easier argument to make. And I think it's a good enough argument because, one, if you told somebody that the government was attacking you or somebody else, most people would just write that off for a couple of key reasons. One, primarily, is because they're scared and weak and they don't want to accept such an uncomfortable reality. And they're going to be very quick to look for any reason to dismiss what you're saying as conspiracy theory. Well, if we're going to get the general public to understand this, as I've stated numerous times, everyone in the country has had this experience at least once, brain fog, you know, dead, tired, headaches, you name it. Um, everybody's experienced at least that at least once. And to get them to accept that this can be done uh, artificially using radio frequencies, it's one, it's a huge hurdle for them to understand the technology and accept it. Um, it's a little complex, it's very scary, and people don't want to know it. Um, you know, two, it's also very difficult to get people to accept that the, that the, you know, the military that we hold in such high esteem and fund like crazy could fail to do, could fail to do that. There's no way they can accept that they were doing it to us. Um, it's just too much. People, literally, denial will kick in, and the human being could, it's not even a possibility at that point that they could accept such a piece of information. But you, when you have facts, that, again, that they knew in bio effects, um, that's enough. That they knew in 98, Congress knew in 06, that means the police knew in 06, that means the AMA and the medical community and the FDA knew in 06 and didn't do anything, that's enough. Because we pay these people to protect us. Okay, the, the Pentagon gets more half of all of our discretionary spending. Okay, they were hired to protect us, and they could have done so, quite frankly, and this is the biggest thing. Uh, I love I love the wording here. Um, to, 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 it could be to, to a person not aware of the technology. If they had made us aware of the technology, then doctors could have kept that information in the back of their mind when they were making diagnosis. Uh, we could have looked at uh, events um, that have that transpire, mass violence events, all of the chronic illness, the fact that everybody's on some sort of pills now. And we could have said, well, how much of this is artificially caused artificially? But they didn't bring that to our attention. And that's enough. That's the failure right there. People can accept that because it's right in front of them. They wrote the document. They didn't bring it to our attention. Those two things are facts. They're easy to prove. And that's enough, especially given how much of our money they get every year and either chose to or failed to protect us. And that's enough. So I suggest set a more re attainable and uh, goal, and that is that to get people to accept that reality, which is a little less uncomfortable, uh, but has already been proven. It's just a matter of time, I hope, before it sinks in. Just a suggestion. You know, I don't want to tell anybody how to live their lives, and and maybe I'm wrong. But uh, in my in my um, determination that this is the best way to go about it. Um,
but this it makes sense to me uh, that we have to sort of you know read the room and play to the audience and give them something that they can you know chew up and swallow and not choke on effectively buying a wide range of tools under the guise of terrorism preparedness. Of course, everything since 9-11, 2001, uh, 9-11, so many years ago, almost 20 years ago, everything is to keep us safe. But if you think that they're trying to keep us safe, you have to remember that most of the time when they say this is for your safety, it's really meaning so we can control you, so we can monitor, so we can stalk you, so we can track and trace everything that we can possibly track and trace about you. So at some point in the future, we can use that information as a weapon against you. So they have been effectively buying a wide range of tools, tools under the guise of terrorism preparedness in San Diego City Council without any meaningful vetting. 